Hear another story. Ah, uh, yes, of course. You've been waiting a long time for this, so how about a special one? This story is very strange and very nasty, but somewhat nostalgic. Do you think you can be a good girl and listen all the way to the end? Is it a scary story? It might be. But it's also a very uh, important story. If you don't want to hear it, I can tell you a different story. No, I want to hear it. This way, I won't be scared. Will you turn on the TV then? Leave the sound down like always. Hello everyone, and now, welcome to Deadly this is, Premonition. This is important. The Rector's Cut, of course. At times, we must urge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. I dropped a nail from a nail gun on my fucking hand. That, uh, that was the funnest. But yeah, everyone, welcome to Deadly Premonition. This is going to be an experience. I've had little to minimum exposure to this game. Hello Could there, children. Just a little longer. Okay. I guess. Um. Okay. Okay, so Mouse does control. Okay, I think I'm supposed to click. No. Sorry to keep you waiting. It will start soon. Uh, Okay, it's children. About time to get started. Um, okay, children. Oh, fucking boy. Zach, what do you think it is? Do you think these children are Zach. raping my mind? Zach, can you hear me? It's me, York. If you can hear my voice. Could you respond? Ah, good. I thought you went to sleep. Zach, don't be surprised. The crime took place out in the country this time. Let's take it slow. Okay, Zach? All right, York. We can do that. Sure, that's one way of looking at it. But it's totally wrong. Yeah! That fucking theme! <laughs> oh, man. Listen, they both need each other. It's called interdependency, and they both know it. 
Yeah. Wooly? He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think of it. It's actions. He's Apparently, Wooly is a goddamn. To fulfill that need, and Jerry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? What? They're having a discussion about Tom and fucking Hello? Jerry. Oh, man. Oh. I can't believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. That is... Those puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well, I'll be a happy camper. Even if it ends up being a waste of time, at the very least it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zack? Man, will I have to respond again? The perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. Well, at least I now have a scar to show off. You see this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Women. They're crazy. Don't you agree, Zach? No smoking. Remember, kids. I'm chewing on a nail right now. <laughs> when I have toothpaste right in front of me. <sighs> oh, now it fucking works. Just need that car accident to get the fucking fuel going. Hmm. Zack, there goes the civilized world. I will save. I will take this fucking pipe. If Silent Hill taught me anything, this pipe is going to be- Oh god, fire! Oh, hey, a gun. I, I didn't check. Is there some way to get into like combat stance? Game. Please. Fucking please. York. Work with me, motherfucker. Your goddamn knife. God damn it, you are. Oh, great, and then you walk right into the fire. I do fuck off. Oh, space. Yeah. 
Wow, that's not really intuitive, but hey. This game's about investigation, not combat. More... That sounded like a jockey from Left 4 Dead. Yeah! My brain is a CSI. Looks like we're being welcomed. Zack, I'll let you handle the meet and greet. Okay. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers. Motherfuckers, motherfuckers, motherfuckers. Come on. Come on, motherfuckers. I need some of that ultra violence, motherfuckers. Oh, yay. Blood. Oh, shit. Poor dog. I'll, huh? I'll put it down. If it lets me. Motherfuckers. I wa I'm an idiot and walked into fire twice. Oh, shit. I, I probably should have went back and put down the dog, actually. No, I'm gonna do that. I think it's dead enough. Yeah, that gun feels super fucking weak and unappealing, but hey, I'll just use this pipe. This pro that knife felt great. So, this pipe is probably gonna feel just as good. Zombie bitch. I'll pick up, uh, I'll pick up the ghost pickles. I'll turn on this generator. And now I get attacked. Or... Maybe? D am I accessing Jurassic Park here? Oh man, those... <laughs> I'm gonna beat the shit out of this bitch. Wanna fight? Nah, I, I ain't gonna use the gun. Guns are for bitches. Um, York. 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 You know what? Fuck this. Fuck you. Talk shit, get hit. Oh, 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 god. Oh, oh, no. Oh, 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 god. Oh, oh. Oh, you're, you're, you're fucking fisting my mouth. As I said to the other ones, talk shit, get hit. Especially you, bitch. You got your fucking mouth. Yeah. As I get fisting my mouth, I'll take those band-aids. How am I getting agent honor for this? Aren't the, wouldn't they think I'm just fucking crazy? I've 
been through a lot of crazy situations, but that one... That one takes the cake. It's the first time I've been attacked so directly. York, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get more of Can that. Can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? No. I Never can't. mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries. Right, Zack? The... York! Actually listen to the voice in your head when I'm talking. Motherfucker. Getting a real the town that dreaded rain vibe here. Well, guess I have to use that pussy shit now. Are, are you still alive? Fuck off, just die. Let me see. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna snipe this bitch. York, stop shooting everyone in the fucking heel. Well, I guess I'm the one shooting them, actually, but still. Oh, so I'm pretty sure I'm getting that pushed right now. But hey, they're fucking slow, so... It's gonna take them like an hour to catch up to me. Oh fuck! Oh, never mind. Oh god, she was right there. Where the fuck art thou? Alright, so, uh, how do I access my inventory? Is, is it through, the, yeah, it's through the pause screen. Alright. York. Uh. York! <coughs> you motherfucker, York. You motherfucker. Well, it looks like I'm shooting it. Five dollars. Five fucking dollars. I shot. Bullseye. I shot. I'm just gonna look behind me paranoid now. Uh. 
yeah. I don't know why, but I'm legitimately hyped every time that happens. I assume going to this fucking spooky house after shooting the lock. Yeah. That's exactly what I wanted me to do. Hi there. Yes. Suck my dick. Die faster. Uh oh god, York. Oh no, York. York. Okay, there it goes. One second, everyone. Oh, hi. I, uh, wasn't expecting you to be- oh, you're fucking- Amazing. Oh, shit, use the world! Well, that is more, like, King Crimson. Fuck this box. I'm Francis York Morgan. Oh god! Why didn't I just shoot that to begin with? Ass is jackass. Man, this is a so amazing. Nice. Oh, you're still alive. Amazing. Now turn around. Holy. Nice shot. You people have really resilient skulls. Alive? No. Say goodbye to your skull. Oh, oh shit, shovel man. Woman. Whoa. Oh, shit, there's like an infinite 
Oh my god, I can't get that one because it's outside of the map. Doctor, get hit! Magic bird. No, uh, uh. Okay, well, the shawl guys to spawn, so I'm good with that. Man, I know where this is going, and, you know, I've seen enough hint I know where this is going, and I'm hoping for it to go that way. Mm. Yeah. Dumb. A little too into this. Sweet candy. Mm-mm, candy. I should eat my There's definitely can of pickles. something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Man, th that little girl... Who's hanging out with the old man probably just thinks, Man, my grandpa's fucking crazy. He's talking about Zax. And a secret agent eating fucking pickles. And just, I don't know, talking to a man in a raincoat? Well, not even talking, getting gestured at by a man in a raincoat with a fucking axe. Well, I, uh, town is this way. Town is this way. Oh, huh, it's broad daylight now. Alright. There we go. All right, York, let's let's walk you uh home. Well, to your new home. Sugar donut. Now you were very late. I got into a car accident. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. I got into an accident because some asshole in a raincoat and an axe. He silent hilled my ass off the road. Oh god, I dropped my nail. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zach? Welcome. 
to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. Hi, George. I'm Zach. I'm... I'm York's inner FBI psyche. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. He's just looking at York like, Man, are you some sort Could of fucking psycho? The FBI is so interested in a small town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profile. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. <clears throat> of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right. Don't worry. I'll get my assistant, Thomas, to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks. That'll be all. Well, then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that, but uh, really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. You don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. Zach, let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just met the king. Oh man, that is a really good fucking analogy. Like, I'm not even being fucking sarcastic or anything. That's a really good analogy. Previously during the investigation, these puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. Welcome to Greenville. I'm the Sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zach? My coffee warned me about it. It's broken. I've been using that one for a long time. Why didn't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. I've never been to a movie theater, though. Oh, little kid. Oh, I'm gonna make it so you never want to see a movie. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Hi, York. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. They can't see you if you hold your breath. Hurry. Like this. Cover your mouth. Okay, I can stop breaking that bone apart. Who are you? It's obviously you. Look at the funky little kid. Actually, now that I see it, he doesn't really have uh, your screen gray eyes, so. Might not be York, actually, so. Hey. Maybe it's Zach. This is the nicest motel I've ever seen. Holy shit. Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. York, don't worry, I got this. I... I'll take this one. It looks really good. Well, that's a realistic price, huh? Neat. Alright, there's the cafeteria, this is the phone to save, I'm going to save just in case. Kind of scary how much currency they're just throwing at. Do I have gun? I HAVE GUN! <laughs> oh man, just run around with fucking gun. 
I'm Francis York Morgan, FBI. Show me your donuts. Hands up. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then. Thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes. It's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no. No one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone Fucking since then. Fucking dead. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my. We're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension. But I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly, I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me. That wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zach, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but... It's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous, too. Clock? Oh, yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it, too, I think. I look forward to hearing it, then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. 
You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I really I like you, York because he seems like a character I can fucking get behind. The very best you have, please. <laughs> the I fact understand. that he's just I'll be right back a motherfucker. <laughs> His first interaction with the sheriff and the deputy, he just fucking blows smoke in their goddamn faces. Look with interest. <laughs> that is a great prompt. I I Did really that? like that prompt. Clear as a crisp spring morning. F K in the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then. <laughs> let's get going. Oh, that, that is a fucking champion's smile. York never change. Never change. York, stop being broken. Hey, old lady. Old lady, where are you? Old lady. Gun. Holy shit, I'm just shooting it. Holy shit, he doesn't care me. I'm gonna shoot Quinn. I know Pat has a vendetta against Quinn. I don't know the reason why, but I'm gonna shoot Quinn. Hail bitch! What the fuck? I think I found the fucking killer. That's a joke, of course, but still. Police car. Hey, I knew we'd come so around. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Yeah, it is. Let's take it for a spin. He seemed like an asshole. But no, he fixed my... He, he gave me a goddamn car. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. Oh, shit. Oh shit. <laughs> oh man. Got master key. Can I use it to steal a car? Yeah, first person driving. Oh, 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 uh, oh, oh, oh. It's night. Oh shit. Um. I, I may or may not have crashed. <laughs> the first thing I may or may not have done is uh, collide to the car you generously fucking donated me into some pedestrian's fucking. <laughs> uh, Francis York Morgan, everyone. Well, I guess we should just say me. So, Zach, 
about those bonus features in DVDs nowadays? You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there, just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed Dude, in that's 1978. A great movie. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels, and the original was re-released in 95. The 87-minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. I know, Zack. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. <laughs> I love the realism of, yeah, we could probably just buy that on the internet. Because it's super true. Also, I should probably, like, check the map. Get off the road, asshole, if you're gonna be this slow. I'd like to mention my odometer is broken. Just completely, utterly broken. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do the entire driving portion of this game in first person. Woo, fuck. Oh. Okay. Um. Zach, we tell no one about that. Well, York, we tell no one about that. That never happened. Oh, that was a fucking nice turn. Holy shit, that was impressive. This game's driving control! Okay. <laughs> it is really impressive to the point where I fucking crashed my car. Yeah! Whoa, Sheriff's Department. Where the fuck fine is my building for such a small town? Oh, the, what a real fuck. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Yeah, I do. I do agree, Morgan. Fuck York. Francis. I hate York. I hate Zach. I hate Thomas. <sighs> Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no. Just doing my job. I just... Well, I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well... No, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? 
Yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon. Alright, I'm gonna need to find a save so I can end this recording here. This has been part one of Deadly Premonition, a game I know I'm gonna... Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you! Yeah. Oh my God, York never change, never change, York, never change. <laughs>